It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. These are the famous first lines of Charles Dickens' A Tale of Two Cities, published in 1859. It's a historical novel that takes place in London and Paris during the French Revolution, which had happened 70 years earlier. It's the best-selling novel of all time, which should give you some impression of how much people appreciate London and Paris, Dickens, but especially the French Revolution. I'll read the beginning of Book One, Chapter Five, The Wine Shop. Now, there are many hard words in here. Even I had to look up a couple of the vocabulary things. So please pause the video, read through the vocabulary first, and then continue. A large cask of wine had been dropped and broken in the street. The accident had happened in getting it out of a cart. The cask had tumbled out with a run, the hoops had burst, and it lay on the stones just outside the door of the wine shop, shattered like a walnut shell. All the people within reach had suspended their business or their idleness to run to the spot and drink the wine. The rough, irregular stones of the street, pointing every way, and designed, one might have thought, expressly to lame all living creatures that approached them had dammed it into little pools. These were surrounded each by its own jostling group or crowd according to its size. Some men kneeled down, made scoops of their two hands joined, and sipped, or tried to help women who bent over their shoulders to sip before the wine had run out between their fingers. Others, men and women, dipped in the puddles with little mugs of mutilated earthenware, or even with handkerchiefs from women's heads, which were squeezed dry into infants' mouths. Others, directed by lookers-on up at high windows, darted here and there to cut off little streams of wine that started away in new directions. Others devoted themselves to the sodden and lee-dyed pieces of the cask, licking and even champing on the moister wine-rotted fragments with eager relish. There was no drainage to carry off the wine, and not only did it all get taken up, but so much mud got taken up along with it that there might have been a scavenger in the street if anyone acquainted with it could have believed in such a miraculous presence. A shrill sound of laughter and of amused voices, voices of men, women, and children, resounded in the street while this wine game lasted. There was little roughness in the sport and much playfulness. There was a special companionship in it, an observable inclination on the part of everyone to join some other one, which led, especially among the luckier or lighter-hearted, to frolicsome embraces, drinking of hell with shaking of hands, and even joining of hands and dancing a dozen together. When the wine was gone and the places where it had been most abundant were raked into a gridiron pattern by fingers, these demonstrations ceased as suddenly as they had broken out. The man who had left his saw sticking in the firewood he was cutting set it in motion again. The woman who had left on a doorstep the little pot of hot ashes at which she had been trying to soften the pain in her own starved fingers and toes, or in those of her child, returned to it. Men with bare arms, matted locks, and cadaverous faces, who had emerged into the winter light from cellars, moved away to descend again. And a gloom gathered on the scene that appeared more natural to it than sunshine.
The wine was red wine and had stained the ground of the narrow street in the suburb of St. Antoine in Paris where it was spilled. It had stained many hands, too, and many faces and many naked feet and many wooden shoes. The hands of the man who sawed the wood left red marks on the billets, and the forehead of the woman who nursed her baby was stained with the stain of the old rag she wound about her head again. Those who had been greedy with the staves of the cask had acquired a tigerish smear about the mouth, and one tall joker so besmirched, his head more out of a long squalid bag of a nightcap than in it, scrawled upon a wall with his finger dipped in muddy wine lees, blood. The time was to come when that wine too would be spilled on the street stones and when the stain of it would be red upon many there.